Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Um, let's do some problems today. So here's problem number one. So suppose I have a homomorphism of free modules. So let's take R. Uh, in this case, let's say R is a commutative ring. Let's take a commutative ring R and let's take a homomorphism phi from Rn to Rn okay, and this n is uh, greater than or equal to 1 and so this is an R module homomorphism. R module homomorphism and let this be given by a matrix A. Okay, So let this correspond to A by which we mean suppose I take Ei to be the standard basis element of Rn with uh, all zeros and 1 in one of the places one in the ith place, then uh, this map phi maps Ei to um, let us let us call it Ej, Ej to summation Aij Ei, i goes from 1 to n. Okay. Now Aijs are some elements of the ring R and recall this is how we associate a matrix to a homomorphism Ij goes from 1 to n. Okay. So, the homomorphism phi corresponds to the matrix A and uh, uh, recall also that we have talked about this uh, in the lectures that this map phi is an isomorphism or an automorphism of Rn is the same as saying that the, the uh, matrix A here has determinant which is a unit in the ring R. Okay, this was special for commutative rings and of course the definition of uh, isomorphism is that there is really an inverse map such that the composition is the identity and this in terms of matrices says that there exists a matrix B uh, matrices n cross n with entries in R such that the product A into B is equal to B into A equals the n cross n identity matrix. Okay. So, this is just something to recall. Now, here is the, the problem itself. So, the question problem says if phi is an onto map, if phi is onto, show that it is also 1 to 1, prove that it is also 1 to 1 and hence an automorphism. Okay. So, this is the thing that we need to prove. If I have a homomorphism from Rn to Rn which is on 2, then it is automatically 1 to 1. Okay, so let us uh, let us prove this. Uh, so, recall that I mean what does on 2 mean? So, let us draw a picture of this module Rn to Rn. I have got this homomorphism phi and what I am given is that it is on 2. In particular, it means that if I take these Eis, these basis elements. Ei, each Ei has, so let us call this element as, as Ei, then each Ei has some element of Rn which maps to it under phi. Okay. So, there exists an element Xi in Rn which maps to Ei under this isomorphism phi. Okay. Let us remove this arrow here. So, that, that little element here is Ei. Okay. So, for each i, We know that there is an element of this module R, Rn such that phi maps Xi to Ei. Okay, that is what surjectivity in particular implies. Now, uh, what that allows us to do is the following. Let us define a map in the reverse direction. Okay, so, I am going to define a homomorphism Psi which maps uh, sort of which goes in the opposite direction. Think of it as going in the opposite way, going the opposite way. Now, what it does is the following, 
it takes each ei to xi hey remember xi is is somewhat arbitrary here there may be many different elements of rn which map to to ei i pick any one pre match okay call it xi and i claim uh, i can use those xi's to define a map psi okay so define uh, r module homomorphism or r homomorphism psi from rn to rn by the following recipe by prescribing its values on the ei so recall if i tell you what a homomorphism does to ei then it's uniquely determined in this case i want the eis to map to xi okay and that now defines a homomorphism uniquely now what's the property of psi uh, with respect to phi well observe by construction if you first apply psi and then you apply phi on any of the eis what you get back is ei again okay so it maps each basis element back to itself therefore the composition phi psi is nothing but the identity map okay, let me call it i it's the identity homomorphism of rn okay so now let's uh, let's take this uh, i mean let's do this in terms of matrices let b denote the matrix of psi okay just like we had a which denoted so recall a already denotes the matrix of phi okay now what do we know the composition of phi phi and psi and remember r is commutative so the opposite ring here is the same as the original so recall this was our our key observation if i'm looking at endomorphisms of rn then to each endomorphism i can associate a matrix but i should really think of the matrix entries as coming from r op the opposite ring rather than the the original if i do this then these two spaces are isomorphic as rings okay in other words composition of uh, endomorphisms maps to multiplication of matrices okay and that's where that that multiplication involved the opposite map but now here we are in the commutative ring case where everything is nice uh, so we don't need to worry about this op business in this case r op is the same as r so now what do we know uh, because uh, phi and psi so the, the the matrix of phi psi so let me use this notation for the matrix of phi psi is nothing but the product of the matrices okay of phi and psi which is a and b okay so the matrix is just uh, ab and on the other hand phi psi is the identity homomorphism whose matrix is the identity you know the n cross n identity matrix okay so what does that mean it implies therefore that the matrix a times the matrix p is the identity matrix and therefore if you take determinants on both sides and recall determinant of ab is determinant of a determinant of b even though they have i mean this is true for all matrices with entries in any commutative ring this is just the determinant of the right hand side the determinant of the identity is 1 so what this therefore gets us is the fact that the determinant of a is a unit because it has an inverse determinant b and well what does this mean this means that phi is an isomorphism so recall this automatically means that phi is an isomorphism in other words it's also 1 to 1 ie it's also 1 to 1 so on to is enough to to ensure one to one and therefore thereby an isomorphism so this brings us to the the obvious uh, second question is the same true if i knew that phi was one to one okay could i conclude that phi is on to so i i give you the same question phi is a homomorphism r module homomorphism from rn to rn phi is one to one okay so the question is does that imply on to ness in other words is is phi an isomorphism okay um, observe the same proof will not work anymore because how did the the earlier proof work we constructed sort of an inverse a one sided inverse in some sense a map in the opposite direction uh, the same same idea will not work here okay so i mean you you should try that to see that you can't quite do the same thing 
and in fact this this statement is false okay so the answer here is no not quite true and the examples are very easy to construct so for example if i just take r to be the integers n to be 1 then i'm just looking at homomorphisms from z to z and i'm asking if i give you an injective module homomorphism is it automatically surjective okay, and that's of course not true because here is an example each n maps to 2n is an injective module homomorphism of z to z okay but of course this is not surjective because the image is only the set of even numbers okay so that's uh, an interesting thing if you're given it's on to then it's automatically one to one if you're given it's one to one it's not necessarily on to okay but the important thing here is that all this only holds if r is a commutative ring okay so recall we used the the uh, fact that uh, you, you you know that you can talk about determinants and so on and all of that uh, really only works for commutative rings okay you can't really make sense out of a determinant of a matrix where the entries are from some non commutative ring because the determinant involves you know the expanding the the entries in some ways you have to take products of the various entries and if you don't quite know what order to take them in then we are in trouble okay all the nice properties of determinants won't be true anymore but the question can still be asked over uh, non commutative ring so here's my question is uh, question 1 that is is question 1 uh, true over non commutative rings okay in other words if i give you a surjective map between you know from rn to rn it does that automatically imply that the map is injective okay and uh, again here we can't use the same proof definitely because the proof there involved uh, realizing that you can construct an inverse in one direction and being able to construct an inverse tells you something about the determinant the determinant is a unit and so on so we, we really make very essential use of the determinant there so um, well it turns out the answer is no so we really do essentially use the fact that the ring r is commutative and uh, let's look at uh, i mean several different counter examples could could probably be constructed so i'm going to describe one of them for you so here's the the counter example so let's first look at uh, so i'll tell you what the ring is in just a minute before i tell you what the ring is let me define a vector space okay so let me call this so it's a vector space over real numbers this is uh, I call it R infinity. The elements are just infinite sequences of real numbers. Okay, think of it like this: x i ranging over R. It's just sequences of real numbers: x one, x two, x three, dot dot dot. It's an infinite dimensional vector space. Okay, so it's like I mean an infinite dimensional analog, if you wish, of uh, the finite dimensional vector spaces R n. Okay, so I think of this as a vector space over R. Uh, over the real numbers and let me define the ring for you let's take the ring r so remember i'm looking to construct a non commutative ring the ring is just the set of all linear operators on this infinite dimensional vector space okay. by this i mean it's just all linear maps t from v to v it's a linear transformation t is it's r linear operator okay so the set of all linear operators on a vector space whose dimension is at least two um, this this collection of linear operators they are a ring under composition it's like if this were a finite dimensional vector space this would be like the set of all n cross n matrices where n is the dimension of the vector space uh, here it's an infinite dimensional vector space so you you actually have lots and lots of operators but this ring r is definitely non commutative okay uh, just like just like matrices in some sense and let me uh, let me sort of demonstrate that explicitly for you so i will look at two special operators which i will also use for my example so one of them is called uh, a it's a following operator it takes x1 x2 dot 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 and moves everything one step forward 
okay, 0, x1, x2, etc. So, this is the forward shift operator if you wish. It is called the forward shifting operator. It pushes everything one step to the right and puts a 0 in the first place. And there is a backward shift operator which pushes everything one step back and when it does that it pops out the x4 blah 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 this is a backward shift ok. Now um, observe that if I first do the forward shift and then the backward shift on a tuple an infinite tuple like this then well it shifts one step forward and then one step backward the 0 sort of gets added on first and then removed in the second step. So, that is just the identity map gives me back what I started out with. But if I do it in the other order then I do not quite get the same answer because the backward shift will, will sort of throw the x1 out and the forward shift will put a 0 in its place. So, this is like the x1 goes away and I have a 0 in its place ok. So, observe that these are not in general equal right. I mean if x1 is non 0 they are not going to be equal to each other. So, the operator AB is not the same as the operator BA ok. Uh, now, here is the uh, here is a counter example. So, what is it that we want to construct? We wanted to construct a, a map so, let us let us uh, review what is it that we are trying to do. We are trying to find. Uh, so, this R is now this ring of endomorphisms. We are trying to find a, a surjective homomorphism which is not injective ok. So, what is it that I want? I want phi to be surjective but not injective ok. This cannot happen if R is commutative as we just saw. But if R is non commutative in this particular example, I mean in particular in this example, we will construct such a phi ok. So, let us do this. So, let us it is in fact enough to take n equals 1, we will just construct a counter example right there. So, look at R the ring of endomorphisms, think of it as just a, a free module over itself. Now, let me construct a map phi as follows um, the definition is the following each x in R each endomorphism of this infinite dimensional vector space I map it to x a ok. A remember is the forward shift operator. So, each x is mapped to x composition a ok this is my map this is a R linear homomorphism. So, recall that the the endomorphisms of R are nothing but the right multiplication operators right and that is exactly what is happening here we are, we are right multiplying by some fixed element of R ok the element A in this case. So, I claim that this map phi has exactly the properties we want that it is surjective but not injective ok. So, let us prove, prove this. So, first why is it surjective? Uh, to show it is surjective let us first look for what what element maps to the identity ok of this ring R. So, observe that if I look at B here, if I apply phi to this backward shift operator B, then that is just going to be B A ok and B A remember is just the identity map ok that is the thing that we looked at first. B A is just the identity map ok. So, in particular that means that if I apply phi to x B ok take any x in your ring R apply phi to x b then by definition this is x b a, but b a is the identity. So, this is x ok. So, what does that mean? Any element x in your ring here take any x it is got a pre image ok. The element x b maps to x. So, that means x is in the image of phi and this is true for every x in my module in my module r power 1. Therefore, it means that my map phi is a uh, surjection ok. Let us show it is not an injection to show it is not an injection we need to show it has got some kernel right that it kills some element. So, here is the, the element it kills uh, let me define an operator c as follows. 
c of x1 x2 etc is x1 0 0 0 so here is my operator c okay it's sort of the projection onto the first component okay keep x1 make all the others zero now observe that so c is clearly a non zero operator right c is not the zero operator okay and on the other hand if i apply phi to c it gives me c a now what is c a a was the forward shift operator okay which is basically it you know so when i first apply let's let's apply it to an actual element and and check if i apply c a to an element x1 x2 dot dot, dot this is c acting on 0 x1 x2 but what does c do it keeps a first component as it is and makes all the other components zero okay so in other words this composition ca maps everybody to zero okay so what does that mean uh, phi of c is zero whereas c itself is a non zero element of the module okay in other words the kernel c belongs to the kernel of this homomorphism phi therefore phi is not one to one okay so I hope uh, the, the example itself is clear. So what this demonstrates is, is uh, various things that the surjectivity implies injectivity over commutative rings uh, for free modules. Injectivity does not imply surjectivity uh, even if you are over a commutative ring. And if you are over a non-commutative ring then you do not get anything. I mean injectivity does not imply surjectivity, surjectivity does not imply injectivity and so on. So, this sort of underscores the key role played by this determinant somehow, you know, it, it over a commutative ring, the fact that you have got this determinant map uh, is, is very key, okay? it really helps us um, in many situations. Mm -hmm.